Today, I want to talk about the damage to the taste and smell post-infection. This is something that we get calls about constantly. And this can be something that can be quite concerning and has the risk of not repairing entirely if you're not careful. So let's look at this. You guys know by now, listening to me, that the effect is on the blood and the blood vessels and the endothelial lining of the blood vessels themselves. We know now that the mechanism is the spike protein, which sticks to certain areas within the blood vessel system, causing an inflammatory reaction, scarring, and possibly a worsening of blood flow to that area. So let's look at this. Let me draw a blood vessel for you. So here we have our blood vessel system goes throughout the body. We have large and small blood vessels with all their unique nooks and crannies. This is unique per person, so there's no telling where one person might have a worse effect than another person. However, we have blood flow, and the better we have blood flow throughout the tissues and organs of the body, the better we have the peripheral exchange, which is how we get nutrients into the tissue and how we remove waste. So here we have these blood vessels, and what's happening is the uh, spike proteins are accumulating in some of these nooks and crannies, and they are causing a stop or reduction in the flow of blood as well as damage and irritation to the local area. So here we have now inflammation and damage, and then we have a reduction in that blood flow. If this is in an area that's affecting an organ, you could have, for example, sclerosing or scarring of the liver tissue or kidneys or etc. If this is happening in the cranial nerves, we can have damage to the olfactory and hypoglossial pharyngeal nerves that control taste and smell. And what is unique to this presentation versus uh, a normal upper respiratory tract infection where you could have a muzzled sense of taste and smell, this is a more reliable uh, symptom for a true bug case because it's different than being muzzled or dampened with the taste and smell. In other words, it's more like a switch, almost like something affected the nerves and the, the there's a change or an altering of taste and smell or it just turns off like a light switch. And so that becomes a more reliable symptom that it's a true bug case because otherwise this is not really common with an upper respiratory tract infection. And then here's the mechanism that we're looking at with uh, within the bus blood vessel sim system. So what are we gonna do to fix it? It's always about getting that blood moving again. And that's why from the beginning, there's these anecdotes of people who just force themselves to run up a hill and the massive invigoration of blood movement jarred free some of these irritants and spike proteins and all of a sudden they got their taste and smell back. Now, this may or may not be a good idea if there's complicating areas within the heart system where there's damage. It could momentarily exacerbate something going on with the heart. We don't know. We can't always see inside of, of a person there. However, it is valuable to think that if you're moving your body, that is also helpful. Now, this is different than blood thinning. If you took an aspirin, you would thin your blood. But if you're exercising, you're moving your blood there's a difference. There's also a strategy where we are trying to move the blood with plant medicines, not thin it, and also improve that peripheral exchange, how well we're getting things moving across the membranes of the blood vessels themselves into the tissues, delivering nutrients and removing waste, which increases repair. So our strategy is going to be to get everything moving inside of that area. Now, the reason why it becomes important to do it sooner rather than later is because whenever you're dealing with the nervous system, the longer the time frame of damage, the less likely the repair. This is the same with any neurological disruption. Six months becomes harder to get that repair to come back 100% and timing going past one year is 
uh, less and less likelihood that we're going to get full repair back. So within our pharmacy and what we have, keep in mind, we're custom making things. We have uniquely a pharmacy with hundreds of pharmaceutical grade single plant medicines that we can customize or moderate or treat the blood flow movement combined with the, those energy levels that are now poor or whatever remaining inflammation is in the lungs. We can do that. But if we were to generalize, it would be the two standalone products that we have. Circulate has been our game-changing uh, toolkit for this whole situation. But if we combine it with alleviate, we have the nutrients supporting the cardiovascular system, blood movement, and the peripheral exchange. Plus with the alleviate, we have um, herbs in there that are protecting the endothelial lining of the blood vessels. I hope this sheds some light for you on what's happening with this and gives you hope that there's definitely ways to treat it. We just see tons of this. One of the benefits we have with the high volume practice is our learning curve is up and we're getting the results. Just want to let you know, if you need our help, you're going to want to contact Kelly by email so that we can start treatment. Have a great rest of your day.